Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Carol. Now you'll have to cancel me out tonight, Angel. Army intelligence is sending me to London. Yeah, it seems some gambler there will take a chance on anything. They want me to prove that murder is a bad bet. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the Jack of Diamonds. There's one nice thing you can say about working for Army Intelligence. It teaches you people are the same the world over. Now take, for example, Diane Halsey. Diane's the gorgeous-looking blonde at the corner table in Sherry's, a swank cocktail bar in London's West End. To look at her, you'd immediately suspect something's wrong. She's not the kind of a girl you'd expect to see alone. But that's purely a matter of choice. Diane's only waiting for the right man to come along. And here he comes now. I'm sorry if I kept you, darling. Oh, that's all right, Bruce. I don't mind. Did you order? No, I thought I'd wait for you. Oh, sweet. What would you like? <laughs> that all depends. When I'm celebrating, I prefer champagne. <laughs> well, then I... I guess you'll have to settle for something else. Why? I didn't see DeSantis. You didn't see DeSantis? Oh, believe me, Diane, I tried, but I couldn't do it. I knew I was wasting my time. N no, don't go. Take your hand off me. Darling, please. You want to do as I ask? Just give me a chance to explain. I'm not interested. All I know is you threw away 2,000 pounds. What makes you so positive? What do you mean? Well, you're depending solely on this Jack Diamond. So? So how do I know I can trust him? I never even met the man. I have. Well, what's his real name? You can't expect me to believe that Jack Diamond isn't an alias. Oh, now, look, Bruce. All I'm getting at, Diane, is how can you be certain those photostats he gave you are authentic? There's an accepted way to find out. How? Show them to DeSantis. If they're legitimate, Mrs. DeSantis will think that 2,000 pounds you're asking very reasonable. Please, don't make me do it. You call yourself a man. Where are you going? That's no concern of yours. And this time, I would advise you to try and stop me. No, you can't. I, I won't let you. No? Well, what? Wait, I'll... I'll do it. I said... You will? Yes. When? Tonight. <laughs> That's my darling. You do love me? Well, of course, silly. Now what with some champagne? I'm in the mood to celebrate. Yes? Are you Julio de Saltis? That's right. Well, I'm Bruce Graham. Look, uh, hey, take it easy, Mr. Graham. I bet you think I'm intoxicated. Never. Well, I am. Well, Mr. Graham? Ever see this before? Uh, where do you get this photostat? In case you're interested, it's for sale. <laughs> How much is it going to cost me? Two thousand pounds. Uh, it's a lot of money, Mr. Graham, but maybe he's worth it. Huh? You want them in cash, no? 
You mean you're actually going to give it to me now? <laughs> you bet your life. Get away from that box. But you said... I said get away or I'll put a bullet through you. You're not fooling me. I'll open it myself. It's okay with me. Why, there's only money in here. Ha! Only money, he said. What do you expect? Well, I thought... Yes? Never mind. Count off 2,000. It's a pleasure. 500, 750, 1,000, 2, 4, 6. Oh, Mr. Graham, you <laughs> dropped your gun. <laughs> no, don't. You know something? <laughs> you have it on safety all along. What? In your work, you should know better. <laughs> Go on. Get it over with. You think the Sanders want to hurt you? No. Here. What? <laughs> Go on, take. But, but don't be shamed. And now for your money. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Do it, quattro, say, and four, make uh, two thousand. There you are. What are you up to? <laughs> That's a funny question coming from you. <laughs> I think I behave very nice for somebody who's being blackmailed. Why didn't you kill me when you had the chance? It's not going to solve anything. Your friends know you're here. My friends? Oh, you never convinced the Sanders you're working alone. So I make the best of a bad bargain. You got the money? I got the photo stand. But I don't think I want to do this again, Mr. Graham. Please, remember this, huh? <laughs> See, Bruce, there was nothing to it. He could have killed me, Diane. He could have shot oh, me. Don't be ridiculous, darling. He wouldn't dare. Not with what we know about Mrs. Design. Well, I wouldn't go through it again for twice the money. How about a hundred times? Huh? Don't you see the possibilities? This was just a test case. As you pointed out, Jack Diamond could have been mistaken. Who is this Diamond chap, anyway? Don't you bother your pretty little head about him. I've got a right to know... All you need know, darling, is he delivered the goods. Now we've got Mr. DeSantis right where we want him. But you promised. I promised what? There would only be this once, that we'd take the money and go away. Oh, don't be absurd, pet. Jack Diamond made a dozen photostats and we'll sell them to Mr. DeSantis one at a time. I'm not going to do it. Yes, you will. I mean it, Diane. So do I. <gasps> oh, darling. Oh, darling, I'm terribly sorry. Did I hurt you? No. Oh, let me see. There. Feel better? Yes. Oh, Bruce, it was your own fault. You shouldn't upset me. But I forgive you. I'm sure it won't happen again. <laughs> DeSantis and company. I'd like to speak with Mr. DeSantis, please. Who is this? Just tell him it's the chap who was up to see him Sunday afternoon. Just a moment. It's for you, Julio. Who is it, Ronnie? He didn't care to give his name. He said he was up to see you Sunday afternoon. Ah, oh, yeah. Do you want to speak with him? Sure. Hello. DeSantis. That's right. How are you, Graham? I'm fine. That's good. You're probably wondering why I called. No. How much is going to cost this time? What? I ask how much is going to cost the poor DeSantis. 25,000 pounds. You heard me. Oh, sure. <laughs> I'm just disappointed myself. I thought perhaps your first try would be your last. I'm serious, DeSantis. I know you are. Have it ready at 9 o'clock. My place again? No. You familiar with Park Slope near Wembley? Eh, I'll find them. You better. And just so there'll be no mistake, I'll be driving a blue Nash convertible. Hello? Hello, Graham. Who was that? Eh, just a fellow I know from business, Ronnie. Julio, is something wrong? Because if there's any way I can help you... You a good uh, boy, Ronnie. You're making sport of me. No, honest. But uh, let me ask you something. Suppose a Mr. X have papers that can make lots of trouble for you. What would you do? 
You mean if I were being blackmailed? I think maybe we can call him that. Well, I'm not much of a hero, Julio. If I were in a jam, I'd give this Mr. X whatever he wanted. <sighs> You're right, Rani. In a case like this, there is nothing to do but to give my friend what he asks for. See? I always told you we think alike. Yes? Hello, Diane. Why, Jack Diamond, of all people. Come on in. Thanks. You know, this isn't very bright of you, darling. I Graham... couldn't help myself. I'm worried, Diane. Oh, well, if it's about Graham, you needn't be. He'll behave. He's going to see DeSantis at night. No, he mustn't. Mustn't? Julio is simply furious. But do tell. I refuse to run the risk of having him discover that I'm involved. <sighs> Seems such a shame to quit now. Suppose I that... won't hear it. Graham mustn't see DeSantis. Now, are you going to stop him? Or shall I? You're not leaving me much choice, darling. But let me think about it for a little while. I'll let you know when I reach a decision. Four. One. One. Two. Hotel Carlisle. Uh, uh, Mr. Waring, please. Michael Waring. Hello? Mr. Waring? That's right. My name is Bruce Graham. Bruce Graham? You don't know me, but... But you feel it might be worth my while if I did? Yes. I live at 427 Charleston West. That's right off Piccadilly. How soon can you be over? Well, not so fast. What's this all about? Well, it's about something you should be interested in. You're with American Intelligence, aren't you? How did you find that out? The same way I found out you were staying at the Carlisle. Which, of course, tells me nothing. It wasn't meant to. I'll fill you in on the details as soon as you get here. But it's got to be before nine. Well, this is all kind of vague, fella. I don't think I can make it. You've got to. You don't understand... Excuse me. Who is it? What? What are you doing here? You said... Hello, Graham. You said... Graham, what's going on there? We can't win a war or a political campaign or even a peace without a slogan. But it helps in a big way to do the job ahead. A good slogan makes people think. If it's repeated and repeated until it becomes part of our language, and if the thought it expresses becomes part of our lives and our daily actions, then that slogan does what it's intended to do. Take, for instance, the universal slogan, Safety First. All motorists should be sure to follow the tip of the best current slogan for them, Drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, there's one thing travel teaches you. Telephone companies are the same in England as they are in America. But I had a hunch that more than the line was dead here, so I hustled over to 427 Charleston. When I walked in, there was no question that someone had Bruce Graham's number. He was lying on the floor with two neat little holes in his head. There was nothing I could do for him, so I made myself at home and looked around. Then in the corner of the room, I saw it. It being a 38 Colt automatic. I pulled out a handkerchief and picked it up. That was my first mistake. I didn't have time to make a second. I say, old man. What? what? I wouldn't do that. You're tampering with evidence. I don't think the police would approve. Oh, I wouldn't be too sure. I would. I'm Inspector Beecham of the CID. Oh, well, I'm glad to know you, Inspector. You're just saying that to make me feel comfortable, old boy. But please, don't bother. I'm quite accustomed to this sort of thing. Oh, now, just a minute. You don't think I had anything to do with this? My name is Mike Waring. I'm with American Intelligence. If you'd like to see my credentials... I'd love to. This is to certify that Michael Waring... was most impressive. What was your connection with Mr. Graham? He called me at my hotel about 20 minutes ago. Said he had to see me. In the middle of the dialogue, I heard two shots. And naturally, you dashed over. Naturally. What do you suppose the poor chap wanted? I don't know. But it must have had something to do with security measures. He knew I was with American intelligence. Obviously, he felt the CID was hardly as efficient. Oh. You don't believe me, huh? Why, my dear boy, it would never occur to me to doubt you. Still, you must admit it's rather suspicious finding you standing over a body 
wiping off fingers. I wasn't wiping them off. I was just examining the gun. Of course. Now, look, I tell you, Graham was frightened of something. He claimed he had to see me before nine. Why? Well, I can only guess. But what do you make of this note I found scribbled near the phone? To Sanders, nine, Park Slope, Wembley. He must have had an appointment to meet this DeSantis there. Poor chap, I don't think he'll keep it. No, but I can. Now, what do you say, Inspector? Well, it might be a nice touch. Sort of a fitting memorial, don't you know? All right, Waring, you keep that appointment for Graham. And I'll keep an eye on you. DeSantis? DeSantis? Hello. What? I frightened you, eh? Yes, you certainly did. Get out of the car. Now, wait a minute. Sorry, I don't have time. Is that gun loaded? What do you think? I think I better get out. Hey, you're not Bruce Graham. That's what I tried to tell you. Who are you? Name is Waring, Mike Waring. I'm with American Intelligence. Oh, I'm sorry. You see, I expect someone else. Bruce Graham? That's right. Well, Graham couldn't make it. What happened? What's the worst you can think of? Murder? Thanks to Sanders. You just won a bet for me. I had a hunch your mind would run along those lines. You understand, of course, Mr. Sanders, that we have no desire to intimidate you. But if you'd like to make a confession, you'll find us most appreciative. You crazy, Inspector. I not kill Graham. What the reason I got? Well, I'm glad you asked me that because I've come to the conclusion... He was blackmailing you. I hardly even know the fellow. Then why did you arrange that appointment to meet him tonight? I don't arrange him. Graham does. He say he want to see me on business. And exactly what is that business? I'm in Porto. Olive oil, wine, things like this. And where were you when Graham was done in? How should I know? Uh, what time it happened? What time was 